What makes some children scared of going to school? And what techniques do our bosses use to encourage better behaviour? Both of these situations can be best explained through the use of classical conditioning and operant or instrumental conditioning, which are two main types of learning. In this short video, we will look at both of these learning types and identify the differences between them. As stated by Andover, learning is a long-term change in behaviour that is based upon experience. Let's start by looking at classical conditioning and how it came about. Originating from work carried out by Russian psychologist Ivan Pavlov in 1902, it was found that an object or an event could trigger a certain response. He was able to show this by ringing the bell when a dog was being fed to create the response of salivation. By repeating this process, the dog associated the bell with the food, which made the dog begin to salivate when the bell was being rung, as it expected to be presented with the food. In behaviourist terms, the bell which was originally a neutral stimulus, meaning it wouldn't produce a response, had now become a conditioned stimulus as it produced a conditioned response in the form of salivation. This then led to the discovery of classical conditioning. Let's take a look at this in a modern day situation. If a child goes to school and is bullied, they are more likely to associate school with fear. In this case, the school has changed from a neutral stimulus to a conditioned stimulus and the association of the conditioned stimulus to fear generated the conditioned response, which would be the child not wanting to go to school. Thus, classical conditioning occurs. The other learning type we will look at is operant conditioning. The origin of operant conditioning came about a few years after Pavlov introduced classical conditioning. Many other renowned psychologists carried out further research into Pavlov's findings, and though the likes of John B. Watson agreed with the research, Others, such as Edward Thorndike and Boris Frederick Skinner, more commonly known as B.F. Skinner, challenged the theory. They believed classical conditioning could account for respondent behaviour, however it couldn't account for the majority of learning. Skinner presented his idea of operant conditioning, whereby behaviour that is reinforced, known as the operant response, is more likely to be repeated, whereas behaviour that is not reinforced, i.e. punished, is less likely to be repeated. As stated by Cherry, reinforcement is any event that increases the likelihood of a particular behaviour it follows, whereas punishment is the presentation of an adverse event that causes a decrease in a particular behaviour. Each concept can either be positive or negative. A positive reinforcer or punisher aims to add a stimulus after the behaviour such as getting a tip from providing quality service at a restaurant, whereas a negative reinforcer or punisher aims to remove a stimulus like not being allowed to play video games because you got in trouble at school. Once again, let's look at this in a modern day situation. After working hard on a project, you hand it in to your boss to review. A few hours later, your boss tells you that the work you did was excellent and truly appreciated the effort. This is an example of positive reinforcement as it adds stimulus, praise from the boss, to increase the likelihood of you repeating that behavior, which would be to work hard on another project. Alternatively, you turn up late to work after a late night drinking with your friends. Your boss may tell you off for being late and dock your wage accordingly. In this case, we see negative punishment taking place as the boss removes the desirable stimulus of money away from the subject to decrease the likelihood of the behavior occurring again. In this case, being late for work. To summarize, classical conditioning is better associated with an involuntary response and the stimulus whereas operant conditioning is better associated with voluntary behaviour and consequences. It is also important to note that in operant conditioning, the learner receives rewards based on the behaviours that take place, unlike classical conditioning, where there are no such enticements.